Every new year comes with a surge of good intentions and the desire to transform our lives into better versions of ourselves. We make grand resolutions, we embark on ambitious journeys, and we genuinely convince ourselves that this time around this year we will do things differently. But here's the paradox that often unfold way more quickly than anticipated. The enthusiasm fizzles out so quickly. Now, why does this happen? Why is there such a huge gap between our intentions and the commitment to actualize them? Now, here are the lessons I have learned over the years. The lesson number one Hello everyone and welcome again to Revaluate with me, Fola. As we go into the new year, having recharged during the holiday season, you probably feel this palpable buzz of possibilities in the air. It's that time of the year again, the time for the annual tradition of making New Year resolutions. I hope you also made some New Year resolutions or at least you have some heart desires for the year ahead of you. In a broad sense, you can almost classify everyone into three categories in each year. Category one are the people who are unsure about the need for any aspirations. You just don't see any possibilities whatsoever. Then category two are people who set goals, but they lack the motivation to continue long enough to achieve those goals. And then category three are people who have a healthy perspective about dreams and aspirations and they understand the practical steps that is necessary to stay motivated until they accomplish those goals in the year. Now let me come back to the first category later, but let's examine the second and the third category first. Every new year comes with a surge of good intentions and the desire to transform our lives into better versions of ourselves. We make grand resolutions, we embark on ambitious journeys, and we genuinely convince ourselves that this time around this year we will do things differently. If you take a moment to look around you, you'll spot the signs of the annual ritual. The gyms are full of people wanting to stay in shape in the year. The digital planners are also flying off the virtual shelves with a determination in the heart of everyone to stay more organized and productive this year. Online courses also see a surge in enrollment around this time as people enthusiastically invest in their self-improvement for the year. The optimism is great. It is contagious, in fact. And for a brief moment, we revel in the prospect for change in the year. But here's the paradox that often unfold way more quickly than anticipated. The enthusiasm fizzles out so quickly than anticipated. The once lively James evolve into a ghost town. The digital planner initially filled with color-coded aspirations and dreams is soon abandoned in the corners of our devices. The online course you enthusiastically signed up for would gather dust in some forgotten corners of ongoing learning on Udemy or whichever platform it resides. Now, why does this happen? Why is there such a huge gap between our intentions and the commitment to actualize them? How do you even fortify your resolutions and be able to yield a more successful outcome this year? How do you 
transition from category two where you set goals but you lack the motivation to see them through to the finish to category three where goals translate into tangible outcomes the first thing i would like to talk about is the power of dreams i firmly believe in dreams both in the literal and figurative sense they play a vital role in shaping our lives i believe literal dreams the ones we experience during our sleep have been studied extensively they are also seen as sources that can help with the power of creativity in the mind and a reorientation of our personal perspectives then there are dreams of the heart the dreams of the mind the aspiration that may or may not be attainable sometime there are desires that we can actively pursue like acquiring a new skill completing the certification exam or changing our diet for a better body for better health or settling into a more meaningful romantic relationships and the list goes on and on and on but these dreams remain just that dreams until we take the necessary steps to turn them into realities that is a dream dreams need to be backed up by the power of ambition that would transform them into tangible realities now let me talk about ambition here ambition is the potent desire to achieve success in a particular field or on an endeavor ambition surpasses the passing nature of dreams but requires the dedicated effort to achieve them without the power of ambition dreams face their toughest trials and the dreams could literally fall apart into pieces ambitions also face their own challenges i believe also you find that the legitimacy of daily routines is the recipe for dead dreams and ambitions in no time the newly developed routine to actualize the dreams get postponed by a day then by a week then inevitably then the entire year slips away the online course then remains incomplete the body is unchanged the once ambitious digital planner stays squeaky clean all year long Ambition is also sometimes frowned upon in certain quarters, but I firmly believe that every human should not only have the power of dreams, but also must have some level of ambition. Without ambition, actually, you hardly wake up to any purpose. It's the reason you might find yourself nonchalantly rolling out of bed at 10 a.m. just because your first work meeting is scheduled for 10, especially if you work from home like I do. In fact, removing the power to dream from any individual, I believe, whether you do it willfully or unintentionally, is dehumanizing. It also disenfranchises people from the, the innate drive that can propel us forward in life. Dreams are great, but cultivating the ambition that drives dreams into manifestation is necessary for each individual to be able to attain their full potential in life. Now, speaking of potential, in a general sense, potentials are kind of abstract. What do they really look like? Most times we can't even fully articulate them. But we know for sure that parents can tell you, for instance, oh, you're not living up to your full potential. That is not a statement that anyone wants to hear from a higher authority in their life. When you hear such statements, you sink your neck into your chest. You feel this deep remorse for not living up to that unknown possibility that is believed to be within your capacity. You even do it to yourself sometimes as well. Uh, somewhere deep within you when you're slacking you feel it you know it you know what you could be doing better you could wake up earlier you could work out more regularly you could become a more responsible husband or wife you even silently sometimes reprove yourself for that for not living up to your potential i think potential is that 
ethical compass that helps with translating our dreams and aspirations and our ambitions into tangible results while we try to navigate the complexities of life. Now, why am I talking about all these, you may wonder, and what rights do I even have to want to help you navigate the struggle? I have been there before in Category 2. I would set goals in January, but by December, they were all nothing but dreams. I would feel frustrated and I'll hope for the best the following year. But over the years, I think I've been able to master the requisite traits that helped me transition from Category 2 to Category 3. You might be wondering about my background, so you can check out the video here for more context about my background. I totally encourage you to do that. Now, here are the lessons I have learned over the years. The lesson number one is a change of mindset. First, I think maybe it's even the most overarching lesson is to change your mindset. The first thing I learned to do in changing my mindset is to write down my dreams. Sketch that thought. I find the best ideas could somehow get lost in the busyness of life. So, maybe how about we do it together now? Maybe grab a pen and a notepad and let's make some notes on things that can help us achieve our dreams better this year. What do I mean by a change of mindset? It sounds to me like a cost-benefit analysis in some sense. I will ask myself these kind of questions. How much do I want that thing? What does that achievement, the achievement of that dream mean to me? Does taking that certification course or exam translate into better finances? Would a consistent workout routine improve my health and my well-being overall? Would seeking a healthy romantic relationship translate into a stable lifestyle for me and maybe some peace of mind? Now, what are the consequences of not following through on these thoughts? Maybe being financially stuck, maybe falling sick more regularly, or becoming emotionally unstable. Maybe I'll lose out on every opportunity for a lifelong meaningful relationship in my life. I have learned to be honest with myself while doing this without necessarily destroying the ability within me to effect change in my life. Now, lesson number two is to break down the goals. It's like that classic example of climbing Mount Everest. Instead of fixing on the daunting summit, maybe break down the, the ascent into manageable steps. Identify the base camp, the foundational task that will lay the groundwork for success in such a feat. Research the best climbing routes, acquire the necessary gear, or maybe build some physical endurance along the way. Each step along the way will contribute to the ultimate goal, which is climbing Mount Everest. To make it more practical, maybe you want to transition into software development, for instance. Then break down that task into manageable subtasks with realistic yet challenging milestones. What language do you want to learn? Which industry do you think you'd apply that skill eventually? Which platform, maybe Udemy, maybe some other platform, would you get the course that you want to embark on? Break the course also into sections and follow through one after the other. I find that by focusing on these smaller achievable objectives, the overwhelming will become attainable and progress will become a series of victories rather than this unsurmountable challenge that you started out with in the first place. Remember that even Everest is conquered one step at a time. Now, lesson number three is learn and apply. You may have heard this before from other people, but let me say it again for the sake of emphasis. Don't learn a skill for the sake of learning the skill. Instead, learn for the sake of application. By application, I mean build a project or find a scenario to apply that skill that you just acquired. 
build a programming project while learning the new programming language, get some native speakers while learning the new language as well. Chances are that if you're watching this right now, you probably already hold a bachelor's degree, but you want to learn another skill that will make you more marketable or have a better market value in the workplace. But you find yourself constantly struggling to complete that other little nano degree or some certification course you applied for online. But I find the bachelor's degree come alongside classes, assignments, tests and exams and with an end date in sight right from day one when you get into the university. I am a Udemy junkie, um, even though I hold a doctorate in electrical engineering. But every other company skills that I have learned alongside engineering, I learned from those platforms. Now, the courses that I learned without any application whatsoever in my mind were either never finished or I totally forgot everything I learned in the course. Now, let me give you the latest example of my learning. So last year, I went back to learn to play the keyboard, having abandoned it since I was a kid. Now, applying the same principle, I was able to actually play the synth pad in a live band just a few months after. And that's because I learned the skill to apply it. And speaking about the keyboard, I will be sharing my journey with you later on this year. You can watch out for that. Now, the question you'll ask me is this. What if I am in category one? I am unsure about the need for any aspiration. Maybe you're unsure about the need for any aspirations right now. You just don't see any possibilities whatsoever. Maybe you don't see it at all anymore. This could be a, a resultant effect of feeling stuck in a monotonous routine over time or experiencing some setbacks in the past or Perhaps a lingering fear of failure, fear of the unknown. The first step I think you should take is acknowledging the absence of aspirations may actually contribute to a stagnant and unfulfilling life. Recognize that possibilities are abundant out there, waiting to be discovered and to be embraced by you. Now to overcome category one, Start by opening your eyes to the myriad of opportunities out there that surround you. Rekindle your curiosity about life and its potential adventures. Reflect on your interests, your passions, and the things that genuinely ignite a spark within you. Consider what you would like to change or improve in your life. By acknowledging the presence of opportunities, you begin to pave the way for aspirations to take root on the inside of you. Now pick up yourself from where you drop the ball or the bar over time. If you find yourself at a crossroad where aspirations have been neglected or forgotten, it is never too late to pick up the pieces again. Now reflect on what led to the stagnation and identify the factors that contributed to the loss of momentum in the first place. Establish a fresh perspective, a set of realistic achievable goals. Now break down those larger objectives into smaller manageable tasks and allow yourself to make gradual progress along the way. Remember that Every small step forward is a triumph and resilience is the key to overcoming setbacks, actually. So whether you're transitioning from category two to category three or you're starting afresh in category one, the journey is about fostering a mindset that embraces growth and cultivates ambition and sees possibilities even in the face of challenges. Life is dynamic and evolving process and the power to change your narrative actually lies within your choices and your actions. Now embrace the potential within, set meaningful aspirations and embark on a journey toward a more fulfilling and purposeful existence. Now, there's no way I'll talk about all these and not make any reference to the power of faith in the heart. 
The dead cannot make plans, only the living does. That reminds me of that proverb that many are the plans in the mind of a man, but only the purpose of God will stand. In your search for purpose, please look outside of yourself and find faith in the reality that is higher than you and that is higher than the mundane. The, the ethical responsibility that is beholding to the supernatural essence of God will spark faith within your heart and the power for possibilities. The sense also of ethical responsibility will translate to the world around you in which your fears will disappear. Dreams will be tempered by the power of humility and ambition and lowliness will go hand in hand and then you become the true change agent that the world around you is waiting for. I hope you keep these words in your heart this year because I believe it will help you navigate your way into successes this year. See possibilities and believe you can achieve them this year. Well, you go have a wonderful, a fantastic 2024 ahead of you. And I'll be seeing you shortly. So I've actually been trying my best to set up the studio since last year, which is 2023. And it's not done yet. This is a makeshift arrangement behind me, but... It's time to set some to set some time, some hours aside to complete the studio behind me. And I'm actually looking forward to that. There are three of those pieces that should be behind me, but right now only one is done. So I'll be seeking some help from from my wife this time around to get the other two pieces done. So you can also look forward to that this year, uh, setting up the studio and make the whole place look better um, in the background. It's going to be fun, something to look forward to. Anyways, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.